Hello, the game has started. It's my opponent to go first. I have a pretty good rack. I don't have a bingo. I can't see a seven or an eight. But I have no duplicates. And I've got a good balance of vowels and consonants. And a good scoring tile in the J. Jorp is good. J-A-U-P. That would get rid of all the non bingo -y tiles. And if my opponent changes... I would consider playing Jorps to get the J doubled. 44 points. Pujar is also good. That takes an H. So if my opponent plays, then the parallel plays I'll mainly be looking at are probably Pujar and Jorp. Adji also good. But it would be nice to get rid of the U at the same time as the J. Just wondering if there are any eights with this rack. I think it's unlikely. My opponent has changed, so I think I will go with Jorps for 44. And that is a bit annoying. Way too many vowels. It's good to see the S. But I think I will probably be changing unless my opponent sticks an R out for eerie. And if I change, I'll keep E and S. Even if I'd played Jorp and retained the S, this would have been a pretty grim rack. I don't have anything down from the J, which reaches the double word square. The best I've got is G. Well, there is an R, but it's not available for Eerie. So I'm going to change. And retain just ES. Much better. I can't see a 7 with this rack. There could be an 8. Let me consider the float as just the P and the S. Well, I can't see anything with either of those. So my priority is to play off the V. And every other tile is bingo-y, so what can I score with the V? I've got an E for going underneath R. Jam is good, and I and S go underneath a H. Well, my opponent's gone there. Hugh takes an S in front, which I've got. So I could play Devise. Or... Vise. Do I have something in row K? I've got the S for going underneath jaw. I can't see anything which doesn't start underneath jaw, in which case I, I am better off playing in column one. I hope I'm not missing a seven here. I've got the semi prefix. Now, what about playing dives, keeping EM, as opposed to devise, which burns the E for only three more points. 37 points. Can I play off the M rather than the D? Well, I don't think so. I draw the X which is a good scoring tile. So if I can play off the W and the X, then the rack leaves going to be fairly bingo-y. Wex in particular is good. Great, opponent challenges. Presumably shoe rather than dives. Jaw only takes an S after it. Column eight, quite hot for bingos ending in S or beginning with S. 
nowhere great for my X at the moment. Do I have a play in column two? Well, I have a new E, but that keeps the X. Just the X and the M, that's not a particularly good rack leave. I can't see anything. Ah, I have X sign. Again, leaving a poor rack leave of MW and X sign takes an R in front, so that's not a great play. only the mid-30s in terms of score, and it's been taken out anyway. Just wondering if I've got an X play down here. Well, I've got just X, and I've got mix for 28, and the rack leave is okay. It would be nice to play off the W with the X, but I can't see anywhere good for for wax or any other word which uses W and X. So is this the best? I've got Remax, but that makes the X available for score. I think I will go with this. Great, and not because the rack's good, but the retention of the W, the W has turned from a liability into an asset with a non bingo rack and lots of vowels, then the W should enable me to score OK and get rid of some of those vowels. So our and a we are both good. Nowhere great for either of them. Um doesn't take anything after it that I've got. It takes P, U, S and M. So I will probably be looking to see what my opponent provides. The top of Jorps is not particularly tractable. Not many tiles go in front of you. I've got one of them in the end, but I can't then play the W. Seventeen minutes on my clock, fourteen on my opponents. Although I haven't seen anything yet, this rack is certainly too good to change. Q takes no single tile in front of it. Dives takes a T after it. Playing down onto UPS is not going to score very much. And certainly playing down column 8 without a bingo is going to be a low score. Now that's slightly an irksome, my opponent changing. Now do I have a play down from jaw? I think Jawan is good. Jawan and Ajwan, 30 points. I'm inclined to play that although the rack leave is horrendous because the score is good. And although the rack leave is horrendous, the merits of having the W at the beginning of this rack will apply for my next rack. But is this good? I think it is. I think it's Ajwan and Jawan. Yeah, another atrocious rack, but weight is good. W-A-I-T-E. That would play in column five. Tor E is its anagram, which would score less. Again, nothing which runs over the top of Jorps. And nothing which goes after um. My T can go after RE, so I could play in row K. But that would keep an extra vowel on my rack. 
Okay, my opponent takes that out, but for only six points. But he's put me in a tricky spot now because all of my scoring options that I'd identified were around the place where he's played, and he's provided nothing new. Or nothing that I can take advantage of. Well, I've noticed I can play Weenie, and I might. Seventeen points is just about okay. The rack leave is good. I am setting up the W for my opponent to score, but he's not going to score massively in column one. And I've seen nothing better. Another five vowel rack to an R. I would have E radiate. And there's an R. Fantastic. Any anagrams of that? Anything through the D? Don't think so. So let me play E radiate. It takes a D and an S after it, so this is a pretty volatile move. But it's good to bingo straight after your opponent has bingoed. And that is a good pickup. That's fantastic. I've got a blank. I've got a balanced rack. Slightly non bingo -y with the combination of B and M. But surely I have something. I think B mouth is good. Nowhere for that at the moment. But quite a few floaters to consider. Now in particular, what if the blank is a D or an S just to cater for column 15? Can't see anything with the blank as a D or an S. Now what about this rack? Plus a D is a Untombed good. I think it is to remove from a tomb. Well, I will play that if I can't find anything better. Umbonate is good. That plays through this A. And that might be better. It puts a tile on this double letter square, so row O becomes less dangerous. But Untombed is going to score more. It's tripled rather than doubled. Let me look for other plays in row O onto the D. Well, my spot's been taken. Let me just see what my opponent has achieved. So if he scores 50 points, Z only takes an S after it. It takes an M in front, which I've got. So a play in column L, column 11 ending MI, or with MI towards the end, would probably score as much as row O. But I th would prefer row O. It's likely to provide less for my opponent. So I'm considering this rack with a D. Not seen anything yet. That's B mouth. That's untombed. That looks promising, but I can't see anything. Okay, I'm going with Untombed. For 89 points, if it stays on. Great, challenged, and the word is good. My opponent loses 5 points. I've got a 120 point lead. And I've got an S for going after Z. So I could play Pogos or Goops in column 15.
coupes would also be quite nice because the C takes nothing in front. So I would not be providing a bingo lane for my opponent and suddenly the board would be looking a lot less bingo-y. In fact, just the floating D would be available. I can't see any sevens or eights with this rack. And I don't need to consider the alphabet. I just need to consider the available floaters. And I can't see anything through the D. There are a few two-letter sets, but this is not a particularly promising seven-letter base set. I no longer have the M for Umzi, and the other M has gone. Still one blank to come. Nothing goes in front of Mick, so there can't be a play beginning with the C of Q. Nothing goes in front of Zar, so no plays running over the top of Z. So this board is, is fairly shut down, which is great since I'm 100 and odd points ahead. But my opponent may, may be able to develop it. But if he doesn't, Coops is going to keep it blocked. Just wondering about other plays beginning with the C and ending with the S. Maybe Capos would be better, avoiding putting a vowel next to this premium square. I have a slight doubt about Capos. And similarly with Copers. I know Scoper is good. Well, I'll probably stick to what I'm sure of, which is coops, and the rack leave is fine, AG. A couple of other bingo lanes I didn't mention are rows I and J, beginning or through I and N of Sintered. But any such play is only going to score face value. And by that I mean the play won't get doubled or tripled. Opponent taking a while with his move, he could have the blank. And if he bingoed now, he'd be within one bingo of me. Remaining tiles fairly bingo -y. Great, just the 20 points. And I can play Coops, which takes out the most dangerous bingo lane and scores 44 points. Pretty good. I have Fadging which I think is good. Nowhere for it at the moment. My opponent may open the board up. If he doesn't, I'll have to do something else. And the board is getting sufficiently tight that it's a struggle to find non-bingo plays. My G can go in front of the O of Coops, but I don't have anything, I don't have anything good using that. So can my D, but I was looking at plays beginning there and getting doubled, but that would require a word with three vowels in the middle, and I don't have one of those. Now my G can go after Zar, my A can go after Et. And my N can go after E. Fantastic. I've got Gan. I've also got Fagin on my rack. Gan stays available. Superb. My opponent plays the Q. He doesn't really develop the board very much. Although there is one U to come and a blank. So rows C and D are bingo lanes beginning with Q and I, but bingo lanes beginning or ending with tiles are less dangerous than bingo lanes with floaters that can be in the middle of a word. Anyway, I don't need to worry about that, and I certainly can't score anything like as much there as I can here. So is this the best I can do? N is the only tile which goes after double E. A is the only tile which goes after Et, and likewise with G. 
I can't extend that at the beginning, and I can't extend it at the end, except I can. Gang, that is better. F and G lack synergy, so it's certainly good to dump the G as well. 34 points. Not a great rack, but I have a lead of 150 points, which is pretty healthy. Only 17 tiles to come. And the, the rack is balanced. It's it's not a great rack because it's not remotely bingo -y. But I've got the last U, which is quite handy. It means my opponent is far less likely to bingo in row C. I'm unlikely to, to play in row C without a bingo because I'm not going to score very much and I'll be opening bingo lanes. I'm more inclined to play in column 5 using my I. So I could play FID in column 5, which would be pretty good, or FIN, sorting out the duplicate N. I'm not too worried about retaining the U, it is the last one. And I'm not l looking to bingo. And by that, I'm, I am, of course, always happy to bingo. I'm just not needing to bingo. It's a, a higher priority to keep the board blocked. And Coops has done quite a good job in restricting the bingo lanes I and J through I and N. Any such bingo now has to have I and N in exactly second place as opposed to either second or first place. Well, let me take that back. I'm having that killed rows I and J for eight letter bingos. There are only six squares between the I and the O. So any bingos in those lanes would have to be a nine letter word ending in O, pretty unlikely. Just 10 points for my opponent. Burns four tiles, only 13 tiles left. So, and do I play Finn? How dangerous is are the floaters in blue? And can I do anything with them? I'm sufficiently far ahead that I, if I can score well and turn over a lot of tiles, it would probably be worth doing. I would like to get rid of the F. I don't consider these floaters particularly dangerous. And one bingo isn't enough for my opponent. 19 points is OK and the rack leave is OK. Quite a nice rack there. Will probably be some eights here. Nice score for my opponent, 32 points. He's now 130 behind, six tiles in the bag. Do I have a bingo beginning with G? This looks close. I have Gernard, but that's only uses six tiles. I don't have the letters for Guardian. Okay, can't see anything with the G. What about the O? Can't see anything there. What about the Y? Unlikely. I've got the un prefix. That only goes with the Y. Can't see anything doing there. The D of irradiate still available. That's no good. So six tiles left. I don't really want to play off more than five. I think strategically what would be best would be playing five tiles in column nine. And I could do that with in urn. What about a play higher up to score more? I can't see anything beginning un. Or A N U. So, what about a play beginning next to the O? Surely there's something here. 
a lot of tiles, all of my consonants can go next to the O. I and U can go next to the G, and all of my consonants can go next to bar, so it seems strange not to have a 5. I can see Nadir and Ranid, but they use the wrong vowel in second place. 9 minutes on my clock. Ah, well, I have Dinar. It keeps the U, but it's the only vowel, and there's only two vowels left, so that will probably be quite useful. It scores 19 points. It kills bingo lanes. Yeah, slight problem with playing off two of the three vowels. So not a particularly useful rack, especially as it's the f these are the only tiles I'm going to see for the rest of this game, there being only one in the bag. I can see what my opponent's got. He's got seven of these eight tiles, and they're pretty nice. So Dinar might have frustrated a bingo. I have created a new lane in column 10 for a seven-letter bingo. But it's not going to be enough for my opponent to win. I'm 150 points ahead. So what can I do with this rack? Not many opportunities on this board for anything. I don't have an E for going after R, so I can't play in column 10 myself. And that would mean if my opponent did have a bingo in column 10, he'd have to use his blank as an E. I would need a P for bankrupt. Only three minutes on my opponent's clock. That's good. My K can go next to the O. Wow. Nice bingo by my opponent. Yep, that's all good. So he's got just the R. He can play ER and he can play Rod. So he's going out. So I don't have to agonize with this rack for long. I can just play a bingo and I'm looking in column 11 it would be nice to play off my F and my K I don't think I can do that so I think null for 24 maybe the best I can do Elevator, a good spot by my opponent. And opponent goes out, pass to end the game. And the final score, 365 to my opponent, 457 to me, a winning margin of 92 points. So, well done to me, and let's see what I missed. It was my opponent to go first. He changed. Let's have a look at that. Well, he could have played res, keeping vain. I think that would have been better than changing. But he changed. And I have jorps, which I like. Opponent plays ra. And now I change. And look at these scores and rack leaves. Dreadful. Opponent's rack. He has wenches and wrenches, misses both, plays hue, and I play dives, vised, h1. Ah, getting the d doubled, okay, that's why it scores more. Nice rack for my opponent, he's got unsecret, tricky one to spot through the s. Now, Cymex, I didn't play that for 32. I played mix for 28, keeping ween. Yeah, and the, the prob trouble with Cymex is that it's inviting a play in row E, which uses the X, and mix doesn't, so I still like mix. A 
components rack, he changes. And is this where I play Jawan? Yes, it is for 30. And Haniwa J2 also available. I prefer Jawan. Nice rack for my opponent, but no bingo. Plays out. And I have Weenie at L1 for 17. Another nice rack for my opponent. He bingos. And I'm able to come straight back with E Radiate, which is the only bingo. Opponent has the Z, plays Z. Now, what was available here? I play Untombed at 01 for 89, and that's clearly best. The same word playable elsewhere for far fewer points. Opponent's rack, he plays Oi. And now I play Coops to score and to shut the board down. Opponent's got a horrible rack, plays Cheese. And then I play Gang, which worked out quite nicely in terms of sorting my rack out and scoring well. Opponent plays Bloop, F6. Ah, oh, we'll found through the O. Yeah, possibly, although that does take an S and it's creating two new bingo lanes. So I play Finn. For 19, yeah, I I prefer Finn. It doesn't score much less than the other moves, and the other moves create openings, which Finn doesn't. Opponent plays Yoga. And this, is this where I play Dinar with six tiles left? It is. And possibly this play of Dan, A6. Makes it much harder for my opponent to bingo. He would have to bingo through the D or beginning with the Y and the O. So I think Dinar has some dismerit in that it creates a seven letter lane. And my opponent does well to find the only bingo. And now finally Nurl was the best at the end. So a nice big win. High score over 450 and a good spread over 100 points and no ladders on this board the play stretching out to all four corners so a good open game although the board was restricted in terms of bingo lanes towards the end so i hope you enjoyed watching that and i will see you next time